Okay, we're, uh, we're off out again, Aaron. Um, what do you remember? What did we do last time? What do you remember? Doors, steering wheel, seatbelt and mirrors. Sound. So we did that D treble sound, if I can speak properly. Um, so doors, that's the first one. We can go through this when we get to where we're going to go. Um, but there's a... I think there was an S missing, so what's the first S? Doors is the first one, what's the first S? Seatbelt? Not quite, that's the final one, okay. Not a major deal, but if you put your seatbelt on and then start adjusting your seat, it sometimes is a little bit awkward. Okay, so always sort your seat out first before then doing okay. your seatbelt. So doors and seat. Remember you're the steering, wheel. steering wheel. So we've got those those two generally come before seatbelt, but honestly if you did stick it on it's not a massive, massive problem. Seatbelts do have given them as they uh, as they move. So that's not a major issue. Um, stay there, you yeah, thank you. Um, mirrors we'll have a little look at when we get down there as well. So that's the cockpit trim, that's fine. Um, what else do we get up to? Um, how to move the car. How to move the car? Okay. What do you remember from that? Nothing really. Nothing really. Okay. So I know we. I think we only did it once. Yeah. If I remember rightly. So that's all okay. Um, we'll have a little look when we get down there. We'll go through the process. I'm not going to explain stuff to you much now because it'll probably just go in one ear and out the other. We're better off doing it practically when we get there. But. Um, is it alright with you if we uh, head to that same car park? Do you think that'll be a good idea? Yeah. Here we go then. Alright, quick update everyone. The car park that we were going to use by the football ground is really busy. Um, the Reds are playing a little bit later and it's quite busy quite early. Um, so we're just heading to a little place a bit further up called Newsham Park. We're going to be a little bit more limited on the steering that we can do, but it's a big long road as you're going to see Erin, and we'll uh, get swapped round in a sec and then um, and get you working. So we've just had a little gab in between leaving ours and going here about what you think that we're going to do today. Just, uh, just tell everyone what we said we were possibly going to try and work with today, what were those things, what did you... Taking off, moving off, moving off, and stopping. Yeah, and what go? Oh, uh, gears and gears. What yeah. we did last week. Yeah, moving off, stopping gears. We'll try and do a little bit of steering a little bit further up as well. Okay, so um, we're going to swap round. What did I say about opening the doors last time? Can you remember? Use your opposite hand. Opposite hand. This hand rather than this hand. Wicked. And we're a little bit more realistic here now because we've obviously got a road. So which way do you think would be a better way to walk around here? Still the back. Still the back, good. Why do you think that is on a road? Because of oncoming traffic. So yeah, the traffic, yeah. You, you see them, they see you, so that's all good. Um, and you can come and get in this seat, Erin. All right, take loads of care when you're coming out on the road as well. All right. Cool, well done for looking. All sound. Happy, well done. Right, I'm just going to move the seat a tiny smidgen. Um, right, um, do you want much help with the cockpit drill? What we went through before, the D Travel SM, or do you feel as though you can just do it? Now the seat. The seat, now the seat, right, so yeah, we're okay with the doors. Was there any other way that we checked all the doors were shut? Have a go. Yeah, we're good, that's fine. So, seat, um, do you remember what part we did first? Height. Height. Yeah. Okay, so that's... Good. Of those two levers, I can see your hand on it down at the side. So, yeah, of the two levers, it's the one at the front. And you lift that handle <laughs> all the way up. Hit. Yeah. And then hold on to the steering wheel as well. And then as you lift the handle, um, move your whole body up and forward. So, don't... <laughs> that's it. Sort of like scotch off the seat. 
So you're pushing back with your, yeah. So sort of like hop up <laughs> off the seat as you're lifting that lever. Go on. There you go. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Try it again. <laughs> See if it goes any further. There you go. You've sussed it. That's okay. That's totally fine. Um, so you've got a, a better sort of like idea and way of doing that now. I think okay, yeah. it's, if you're ever unsure of what's going on, just ask, but I'll usually be able to tell where, um, if you're doing things that, you know, maybe not quite right, I'll usually suss it out and give you a different way, but that was good. So hop off the seat, sort of like lift yeah. yourself up and off okay. and then the seat naturally just follows you. Okay. So we're good. Are you at the correct height though? Too high I reckon. Do you think, do you think your eyes are above halfway in the, in the window? Yeah. Do you feel? I actually don't think they are, you know. I think they're sort of here-ish, which is pretty good, you know. Okay. You're all right. Do you feel too high? Is your head whacking the ceiling? No. Is it obstructing your view of this thing? No. So you're all right, you know. Okay. Okay, sound. So height, we are done. What's the next part that we do? The back of it. Uh, it's actually the forward backwardsness okay. way to the pedal. So. Um, right down at the front left. No, that's the uh, that's the twisty one. Okay, the one that rocks. So good, it's that one down at the floor. So hold the steering wheel with your right hand, lift that handle up, and then slide the seat further forward. How do you check you're in the correct position? Remember, we press that left foot all the way to the floor. And that left pedal. Remember the clutch pedal? Yeah, good. Do you feel as though you're stretching a bit? That bottom part of your leg is just pushing down into the seat to get the pedal to the floor, so therefore you're stretching a touch. Can you go forward? A little bit further forward, well done. Try that now. It's better. That's better. Yeah. Good, well done, excellent. Remember that toe on the pedal. Remember we mentioned your knees at the side a little bit as yeah. well, didn't we? All right. Do you feel as though your right foot could um, touch both of those pedals, the brake and the accelerator, probably yeah. a little bit higher up on the pedal. So just move, yeah, that's, that's a bit better, good. Does that feel okay? Yeah, so we're comfortable with our seat. Is the back part okay? Feel as though you sat too far up, too laid back, or about too laid back. too laid back, okay. So it's the other handle behind you at the side. It's not the one on that front corner. Yeah. And then remember, um, so yeah, lean off the seat, good. And just get it to where it's comfortable. About there, wicked. And then we're trying to get our hands the correct distance away from the steering wheel. So the back of the seat, remember, is comfy. Um, can you remember the way that I asked you to check whether you were the correct distance away from the wheel or not? If you get your hands around it like that. And are you struggling a little bit? A bit. A little bit. So that steering wheel needs to Go move back. in. Do you remember the lever that actually controls where the steering wheel or how the steering wheel moves? Good. So what should you do with your left leg? Stretch it out down the left hand side of their foot well. And then yeah, you can pull that Is lever it down. Up, down. It's down. Good, well done. And then physically push in. Now, remember we said about checking just with your shoulders back in the seat, hands over the top of the wheel, and it should be this fleshy part on top of the wheel. Okay, so that's it's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, feel okay like that. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, now do you remember the line of the uh, the dials up? We used to, well, what we did last time was we, we lined the steering wheel up so you could see the dials through that top. Do you feel as though, is that about right? Yeah. Okay, all good, finished, well done. Nicely done, locked it into place. Is there anything else about the seat that we haven't checked though? It's this bit. Good, well done. How is that head restraint? Fine. Okay, it's probably a little high. Okay, um, so although it still would be okay, the back of your head wouldn't go underneath. I just want you to have a little practice of putting it down. Do you remember I said to you last time about okay, putting your hand to yeah. So sit, look forward. Good. Press the little button in and put your other hand on top and push it down so it's about the top of your head. That looks pretty good. All right with that? So we're okay with that. Is there any other part of the cockpit drill that you've got to do? Seatbelt. Seatbelt, okay. Great stuff. Mirrors. Very good. Well done for making sure it's all not twisted. Excellent. Um, some mirrors. Uh, which mirror would you like to do first? That one? Go, on, go for it. 
what are you looking for to get that mirror adjusted correctly? There you can see at the back of it and mm -hmm. all three of the things. Yeah, three, the of the seats. three head restraint the, in, the, in the rear seats, you're right. But yeah. which side did we get you to position it to a little bit more? Towards yours more. Actually not, the other side towards okay. yours. Because if you look here, which is our biggest danger side as we're sat here. Right to the right, side. it is, isn't it? So that's why we always position that slightly more to what we call the offside of the car or the right hand side. Okay. So sit and look forward at the cars parked far up the road, first of all, Erin, because remember, when you move two hands to actually use that mirror, remember what happens to your head position. Move yeah. slightly, does. <coughs> and just glance at that mirror, and you tell me, can you see the top and bottom of the back window? Yeah. Good. Can you see more of your head restraint this side or more of the one my side? My side. So how's that mirror positioned? Okay. We're Correctly. Good. So we're good. We're good with that. Any questions? No. Should I be able to see all of the one to the right? No. Just more of. Okay. okay. About right? Okay. Super. So we're now going to have a little look at the other mirrors, the side mirrors. We need to turn a lecky on. Um, to be able to do that. The key is in my pocket, so you don't need to worry about the key. How do you turn the ignition on so all the, all the lights come on on the dashboard and everything? Start button. Good, give it a press. Wicked, so we're okay there. Um, and now, are you okay sorting and operating the side mirrors? How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, it's this one, so it's to the right, it's on the right hand side. Good, well done. Which hand are you going to use to actually work that button? My left. Not really, it should be right, because right. again, it's the same sort of thinking behind why I didn't get you to use your right hand for this, because you're leaning across yourself. Across. Okay. So if you use your right hand with that button, you can sit and again, look forward and then just glance with your mirror so you get your mirror in that correct position. Okay. okay. It's a little bit easier this time, because remember last time we were in the car park, we had all the hedges behind us, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, how much of our car should we be seeing? Two fingers, was it? Good. Do you need to move that in or out? I'm just going to get rid of this little flyy thing. Come here, little flyy thing. No, I think it's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Wicked. I'm just going to get rid of this fly. Go on, little flyy thing. Out we go. <laughs> Yay! Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> saving that little animal. Um, so, a little bit of our car and then um, how much road and sky proportion have we got well if you look at that road in the far distance the blue car that's just come past could you see that blue car what blue? in this mirror yeah oh. you didn't see that one's just <laughs> gone past as well like the white the, van like see the whole white van okay could you afford to move that mirror down any and still see that other yeah. van that's just gone past well we should do that because then which hand should you use Aaron that's it, sit and look forward at the car in front because you're staring directly at the mirror. Look at the car and just glance. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. So move that mirror down as much as you possibly can to still see all that road coming past in the distance and then it increases what you can see of your road, doesn't it? Okay, yeah. Now you sat in the correct position, do you feel as though your mirror needs to move in or out any? Out a bit. Okay. You alright with that? Yeah. Finish twinking? Yeah. Okay, it's not a problem. Um, and then we're going to work this one to the left. So again, use your right hand with the uh, with the button. And then we should be faced, remember, about 45 degrees out towards where my blue cloth is. And then glance your eyes the rest of the way. So you can still look at the car in front and still look at your mirror. And then get the same proportions with this left one. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a car, good. Now look into the distance at that road and the shop in the far distance. Do you feel as though you could move it down any and still see the cars coming past? Yeah. Is that about the max you could do? Yeah, you moved it that way a bit again. Good. Maybe moved it up again. Yeah. When are you comfortable with it? Yeah. All good? Sound. So we're okay with our mirrors. I'm happy with that as well. Great stuff. We're going to go straight with the checks that we need to make before we start the engine. Um, I know we did a lot last time. It's been a week since our last lesson, so it's a little bit to remember. But 
Do you remember anything about checking anything down here? If the gears, can you move it? Okay. What it's called, though. Neutral. Yeah. If it's a neutral, well done. Um, however, I'm just going to show you something um, here, which is a little basic thing, but um, a lot of people go this way around and they don't really realise why you check things in this order. We should check the handbrake or parking brake first and then the neutral. Okay. And this is the reason why. I just want to make sure I'm not going to trap your left foot under the pedal. I want to press mine. So we're in gear. I'm going to take the handbrake off and we're on a hill slightly but we're not rolling because my clutch is up and the gear's engaged. Having it in gear actually stops the car from moving. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What if the handbrake wasn't on quite tight enough and you checked it neutral first and we were on a hill? A steep roll one. Down. It would roll down. So that's why we should always check handbrake first okay. and then neutral. Alright? Sound. So just double check, I've checked them properly, you check for yourself. Is it in uh, is the handbrake on? Feel the pressure? Yeah. Good, well done. And check neutral. Well done with the springs. Good, we're now okay to start the car. Do you remember what pedal we had to press to start the the engine? Clutch. Good, go for it. Try not to look at it as well, Owen. Trust yourself. Good, hold on. All the way down, straight down. And you can press your start button. Super, relax your clutch. Don't need to press that now. Good. So, cockpit drill, um, you've got through that quite well. How much of that would you say that you remembered of the cockpit drill? Um, about 70% of it. Okay, wicked. So the bits that maybe I had to remind you maybe about the mirror position, maybe yeah. about the order in which you get the seat yeah. sorted. Um, have a little look at my video on the cockpit drill and just go over that and yeah. then see whether you can do that 100% next time. Yeah. All right. But you're getting quicker at it as well, which is understandable. Good. Um, would you like to have a little practice at the use of the feet? Um, the, the terms, for example, set the gas and find in the bike. Would you like to have a little go at them before we actually try them on the road? Yeah. Um, so what I'd like you to do is put your right foot in that position so you can cover the brake and let it fall to the gas. Good. And then just put your foot over the gas pressure and just give it a little squeeze just until you hear that engine note rise. Try not to look at your counter, your, your rev counter, because as soon as you do that, you actually take your foot off the pressure. But if you just listen to it, you'll keep the pressure. Squeeze your gas a little more. Keep the sound. Good, well on. That's the about the correct sort of amount that you actually need when you're starting off. All right, good. So come off the gas. We'll have a little go at practicing finding the bite. So all you need to do is press the clutch down. Good, well done for it, without looking. Without looking, can you select first gear? That's the third first there you go wicked so we'll gently lightly lift the clutch up and slide your heel across the floor the rev comes first in this car remember and then you lift it up a little more I'm just going to cover my brake and give it a little squeeze in case you go too much and we shoot forward but lift the clutch a little more until you, there you go feel the rock good dip the clutch down about the thickness of a pound down squeeze down there you go, lift back up a little bit again, lift up a little more, down again, feel it creaking on the handbrake, yeah, clutch all the way down now, good, take it out of gear, to neutral, check it's neutral, and then you can relax your feet, okay, did you feel that little creak on the handbrake, and hear it, yeah, good. Um, so we'll just quickly talk through the process that we're going to use to move off. And we're only going to move off a little bit further up the road and maybe go and park in before the second lamppost on the left. So we're not going to go far. Okay. Um, just for a little moment, turn your car off a second. Did you press the off button? Yes, good. Oh, no, no, sorry. The start, stop engine button. Okay. Do you know what the off button is for? It's actually to turn off the start, stop feature. You know where it... 
sort of like cuts out when we're still driving and I'm maybe at a set of traffic lights. Yeah. Yeah, it's to turn off that okay, okay. feature. Just so just press that one, okay. So we're just gonna explain a couple of little extra things here. I know you said last time that you're okay just being told things. Are you still okay? Do you need me to get my iPad out? I can That's if you okay. want. No, you're quite right. So to get from here up to the same position a little bit further up, we've got a little bit more to do because we're not just in a car park. We've got to appreciate the cars behind. But the process to move your car is going to be the same with your feet. So we'll press the clutch down, we'll put it into first gear, set the gas, we'll find a bite. Then though, we need to do some observations to make sure there's no cars coming on the road. Okay. In the car park, I got you to check everywhere. But as we're moving away from this curb, which side do you think you need to be checking? This side. Of this the side. Traffic. Good. There's plenty of driving instructors out there who think at this point you have to do a six point check. In other words, checking all the way around your vehicle. Okay. But you honestly don't. And people often say to me, well, what if a cyclist comes down this side and, and rides off in front of you? Well, where's the front left corner of your car, Erin? Point to it for me. Okay, over there. Great. So, would a cyclist come off at the side of you where you can't see them? No. So, can you think of anything in that left blind spot area that will affect you moving off forward to the right? If there was perhaps a road there, you might decide to have a little check. Say if there was a road probably four or five car lengths back, you might decide to have a little check. But honestly, you still generally don't. All you need to check is obviously ahead, behind, your right mirror, and then your right blind spot. Because look at that sort of entrance over your right shoulder. Go on, lean forward around your pillar. There you go. So could there be a car coming out from over there that you wouldn't see? That car park there? Maybe, like maybe, yeah, maybe. There's wouldn't no it? other, like, ways to come out apart from the road. Super. So could there be a car coming out from that car parking area when we move off? Yeah. There could. So we need to check, and that's what we need to check that shoulder for. Because it would affect us if we were moving forward to the right, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right? But I'm not saying you never need to do that check around everywhere. You've got to think of your scenario and your situation that you're in and check appropriately. You've got to take effective observation. Rather than doing one blanket check everywhere, every time you go, look and observe and think. Think where you are and think where risk is and check effectively. Make sense? Good. So we're going to be <coughs> assessing the cars coming up behind. We're going to be assessing ahead. We'll check no one's overtaken and check a blind spot to the right. And we'll signal depending on whether actually anyone needs it. Okay. What would you think the car's coming up behind? See this white one that's coming up behind yeah. now? If we had a right signal on at the moment, what would that white car think? That we're going to pull out and go that way. Good. But were you going to pull out before the white car passed anyway? No. So it's misleading. Okay. So never sit here at the side of the road with a right signal on asking to be let out when you're not going to go anyway. Okay. You literally wait till it's clear and then, and then decide whether you need to signal. Could this blue car come the other way and the silver one and the one with its lights on maybe thinking that they're going to park in on this side? Yes. They could be living in a house, probably not in here to the left, but if there was a house yeah. here to the left, they could be going into that driveway. So would it be important for them to know that we're moving away? But surely they would indicate and you'd let them go in first. Right, okay. You may do, but the, the important question is, would they need to know we're about to move off if they're thinking of turning into a driveway? Yes. It would help them, wouldn't it? Yes. It would help them judge what they've got to do. Yeah. Therefore, if there's oncoming cars, we are going to signal. Okay. But we're not going to signal for cars that are coming up behind. We're going to wait for them to clear and then decide whether we signal or not. What if there was a pedestrian going to walk across the road? Would they need to know when we're moving off? Yeah. Great. Why do you think then um, we don't just put a signal on regardless all the time? 
what does that make you do more if we try and signal when required and not when we aren't required? Well, what do you think is the benefit of that? Okay, so what I'm going to try and get you to do when we're driving is not signal for absolutely every situation all the time. I'm going to get you to make a decision whether we need to. Okay. What's the benefit of me trying to get you to do that? I'm concentrating on everything else. Yes, and you are observing more effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you get into the habit of just putting the signal on all the time, do you think maybe you could skip a look? Yeah. See where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So we're going to decide when to put a signal on and when not to. And that same process happens when we're parking in. We're going to okay. look all around and be stingy with our signals, but we need to put one on if people need us to put one on. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So the only other little thing that we've got to get you to do is to judge when we're close to the curb on the left. Okay. Yeah, so the <laughs> look on your face. It's actually so simple. Okay, now sit normally, put your hands on the steering wheel and look at where the curb seems to be in your window. I know it's to the left side of our car, but point towards where you see it, sort of like dissect in towards where, yes, down here. Is it approximately in the middle of your window? Let me just grab. Yeah. Yes, that was nice and positive. I don't need to do, I was gonna put a little pen there, but it's about in the middle of the window, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. That middle of the window, if you look across to this left mirror, equates to how far are we away from the curb. Okay. Yeah? Within a gutter's width, so we're nicely parked. We should do, because Ashley parked here, yeah? Be a bit embarrassed if I couldn't <laughs> park. So, when we drive, we're gonna move away from that curb. So this curb is gonna seem to be over here more. Okay. And when we come back to it, it's gonna come back to the middle. Okay. Then when we're close enough, when it's back to the middle, State the obvious for us. Where would you like to point? Pardon? Where would you like to point your car when you're close to the curb? Do you want to point in towards the curb, away from the curb, or do you want to point straight? Straight. Where do you think you're going to be looking to do that? Middle. No. Ahead, far up. Okay. You'll know it's in the middle means you're close enough. Okay. But then to get straight, you will need to look up and stop the car moving towards the curb and stop the car moving away from the curb. It's okay. movement that's the key and when people stare down at this curb they always tend to steer towards it. So remember we'll steer a little bit back to the left, we'll then steer a little bit back to the right when we're close enough and we'll look up maybe as far as the blue car and then stop our car going either towards or away from the curb and then we know we're straight. Okay. All right. As we're doing that, we would have come off the gas, we will cover our braking clutch, and then just to stop, all you simply do, Aaron, is press the clutch down, squeeze your brake a little, and then the car will come to a stop. Clutch all the way down. Clutch all the way down. Okay. I know I did the um, diagram of the clutch to yeah. you last time. Don't worry, I don't expect you to remember everything. It's quite complicated when you first start off, okay? Now, I don't expect you to remember everything. Don't worry if you can't remember everything. I'm there as your sort of like eyes and ears okay. a little bit. Don't forget, I'm not just going to go, go on then, you've been told, go off and do it. Okay. I'm going to talk you through it. So there's no need for you to panic. I'm here with the jewels if needed. I'm here with the steering wheel if needed. I can do all sorts from this side. So you don't need to worry. Um, just try and listen carefully to the instructions that we're giving you and then we'll take it from there. All right, mm -hmm. so we'll get a car started again, I think. Yeah. What checks do you make before you start the engine? The doors and We've the... done all the doors. These two, okay, wicked. Which one of these two do you do first? Handbrake. Go for it, feel the pressure, make sure it's not yeah. any different. And is it still in neutral? Yeah. Wicked. And how do you go about starting your car? That button. Okay. How come it didn't start? What pedal were you missing? What pedal? Yeah. What pedal?
pedal did we have to press before to start the engine? Clutch. Were you pressing it? No. That's why it didn't start. <laughs> Easy, isn't it? Yeah. All right, good. So clutch down. Good. Press your start button. There we go. Relax your feet. So we're good? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have a little go of moving off. Have you got any little questions that you just have got no clue about what Ashley's talking about before we actually go? No. No? So you sort of understand the concepts, but I don't expect you to remember them. Just listen to that. Yeah. It's actually dead easy. Main thing for us, Aaron, see these hands? Relax. If you grab, your feet are going to tense, and your eyes will be like that as well. <laughs> you must relax. As loose a grip with your hands and arms as you can. Your, your arms need to be all loose and ready to just subtle little movements of the steering wheel. So have a go. So we prepare first of all, which is clutch down. Try not to move. Good. What gear do we use without looking? Well. Good. Real. Okay. So you've got that little bit of gas set already. Just hold the steering wheel. Good. And then your hands are all ready. Now, what do you do with the clutch pedal? Bring it up. Bring it up to where? You find the point. Find the little biting point there. Just push it a little below the biting point, just so we're not going to surge away. And then we're all prepped and ready to go. Okay. We now do what we call a mirror signal manoeuvre routine. We check our mirrors to make sure it's safe. Is anyone coming up behind? Is anyone overtaking us? Is there anyone ahead that's the issue? Well, the car with its lights on may need to signal. No, we won't need to it's signal parked, for that one now because yeah. he's parked, but the silver that one we may up. need to signal for. So we're going to make sure we're ready. So do a check here. Is there anyone that the signal would be confusing to? No. Is there anyone overtaking us? This silver car is now going to be passed. So put your left hand on the handbrake. We don't need the signal. Check your blind spot to your right, round and over your shoulders. Anyone coming out of the car park? No. Good. Release your handbrake. Lift up before you go for the button. Lift hard. Then button, then release. Good, hands on the steering wheel. Keep glancing at your mirrors in case things change. Squeeze a little bit more gas. See the car coming? The gas. No, see the car coming behind. So yeah. we've got to change what we're doing. After this car, does it look clear again? We're going to have another check here, there, there, ahead. Yeah, Squeeze car coming. We're fine though. Oh, she's going to cross, so we're not going to go. Things to happen like that, that's perfect. Now it looks pretty clear. Have a look behind again. Ahead again's good. Anyone overtaking or in your right blind spot? No. No, we are going to signal up for right, so signal this up. Good. Squeeze your gas a little. Hear the sound. Hear the sound. Don't just push it. Now start lifting the clutch and feeding the power in and keep an eye on your mirrors as well, Aaron. Feed the power in with the clutch. Lift, lift. Lift a little more. Hold it there. Steer a little bit out to the right. Lift the clutch a tiny little bit more. Feed a bit more power in. Now you can cancel the signal just by touching it lightly. Good. Now clutch all the way up and reassess your mirrors. Is there anyone about? No. Good. We're okay to park in again. So we're going to check this mirror and this one. Is the cars that might need to know what we're doing? Yes. Put a left signal on. Yeah, good. Cover your brake. We're getting quite close. Get straight with the blue car and keep going straight. Clutch fully down and brake a little more. Clutch fully down, Erin. Clutch down, Erin. Clutch down. Clutch down. Gently brake a little bit more. Just listen to the instructions. Good job. Well done. Feet still. Now what do we do? Take this up. No? Handbrake on. Good. The coordination that we were doing before, when we were doing the checks before we start the engine, they're the same. And try and remember things in this order. One. Two. And then three. That's irrelevant at the okay. minute. People always want to take the signals off. It's still showing that we're parking here, so it's not confusing with anyone. So put this on first. Good job. Good. Neutral. Have a little bobble. Nice. And then you can cancel the signal, just a little touch. Good. Can I take my feet off them? You can. Once you've got those two on, you can relax your feet. Good. I forgot where the clutch was. That's okay. Ooh. So... What was happening there, as I was saying, press the clutch, and I know you, you weren't, you were pressing it a little bit, okay, you had your foot sort of like over and were just pressing it a little bit, but because you didn't press the clutch down, what was the engine doing to the car? What was it making the car still feel like it was wanting to do? Move. Move. Okay. 
good. So you have to press the clutch coming to a stop to stop the engine pulling the car forward. Okay. Did it feel as though it was sort of like a battle against the brake being pressed and the car wanting to move forward? Yes. And if you'd have pressed the brake even further, it would have stalled, it would have cut out. Okay. Okay. Which is okay, it's no big deal. But it's really important at this stage that you understand how things work and what goes on. Okay. All right? Okay. So what's our position? Sit normally looking at the curb, what's our position like with the curb? Is it pretty much in the middle again? A little bit over. A little to bit the over left. to the left. So we could have gone a little bit more closer, in. more in. And if you look at your left mirror, yeah. we're a little wide. Yeah. However, do you notice when we were getting close, where I said for you to look? Blue car. Blue car. We don't want to go towards yeah. or away. And you actually did a really good job with that. Okay, but just trust it next time to go that little more so we're back in that parked position. Have you got any questions about what we did there, even the first little bit? The first little bit was quite complicated because we had many different things happen that were determining when we were going to move off and when we were going to signal. It was actually much more complicated than I would have liked for the first go. However, you did cope with it quite well. Do you feel as though you understand the decisions that we were making and why? Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't kind of get, grasp the stopping bit. The stopping. So the stopping's the bit that you'd like to go over and concentrate on this next time. Great. So let's just have a little think about this and, and work with this now. We'll move off in a similar way with similar decisions on what we do, okay? Um, the stopping, we'll do a mirror checks, this side and this side, because we're moving to the left. We'll signal if required. We'll come off the gas, and what's that gonna do to the car's speed? If you come off the gas pressure, slow it down. it'll slow it down. Do you remember idle speed from last time? The one, good. But what does the car's speed do when you're idle? Does it go faster, slower, or stay the same? Stay the same. Stays the same. So we'll be in first gear. It will be approximately at walking speed. You'll come off the gas and it will slow it down to walking speed and then continue. Okay? Yeah. At that point, you'll cover the brake and cover the clutch. So we're ready to use them. When you say co oh, cover them, yeah, okay. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So put your foot over them. Yeah. Then, We'll do our positioning back to the kerb. Trust yourself to get a little closer next time, and then point straight. Okay. Then, remember we don't want the, the brake to be then battling against the car so moving forward. So the clutch has to go all the way down? Yes, so yeah. the clutch goes all the way down, and then we finish the brake off to do our little gentle stop. So okay. once the clutch has gone down, it's only one pedal, your right foot on the brake pedal, that is then slowing and stopping oh, okay, us. Okay, yeah, because if you put your foot fully on the brake, it's just going to like prop up. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So that's, the clutch goes down quickly, but then you use the brake in a different way, don't you? Yeah, you just slowly. have a gentle slowly. Yes, good. Okay. All right. Does that make a little bit more sense to you? Yeah. Good. Well done. Um, nicely listened back there. I know it was just the clutch that you had a couple of issues with, but nicely listened with all of it, because it was much more complicated than I would have hoped. That's why we wanted to go to the car park. And it might mean today, Erin, that we um, don't get loads of gear changing done, but honestly, it's irrelevant, because we're doing other things. We're teaching you how to move off on a road and how to park next to the curb. So our sort of, our plan and our focus is slightly tweaked. So don't feel as though, you've done badly today because we probably won't get gear changing done. Okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Wicked. Um, fancy having another go? To where? Uh, past the cars oh, and okay. halfway up the hill on the left. It's alright, it's just the start stop. Because okay. we didn't I turn it off. Oh, okay. It just then um, senses when the battery starts to lose a little bit of charge and it okay. will start the engine. Okay, so that's good. We need it on anyway because we're going to get going. So we'll drive past these parked cars and then go a little bit further up, halfway up the hill and we'll park somewhere on the left again. All good? So we're going to get prepared. What do you do with your feet? First Make sure you can cover the brake and the gas. Very good. So your feet are in that position so they're usable. Good. Well done. That's the clutch pedal there. 
So that's the brake, that's the gas, yes, you've got them. Yeah. All right? Okay, so what do you do before you put it into gear? What pedal do you press? Clutch. Go for it. Well done. Um, hold your right hand on the steering wheel, left hand on the gear lever without looking. What gear do you select one. into what? Very good. So look at the lack of vehicles coming up behind. Do you think it would be good to get our feet ready so the car's ready to move? Yeah. So what do you do with your gas pressure? Gas. Yeah, you squeeze a little and hear the sound. Good, keep the sound. Squeeze a little bit more, can't hear it. You've got no power. Now you've got a little bit of power, that's good, keep it, because you've let go of it again. Keep it. Good, hold well on. Keep that there, keep the power. Now, what do you do with the biting point? Find it. Good. Lift slowly, lift from the floor. There. Dip it just a little bit further. We don't want it sort of like pulling too much, but we do want a little bit of pull because we're slightly uphill. So hold the handbrake so we're ready to go. So do your checks here, is there anyone behind? Yes. There is now. So actually what we're going to do is press the clutch down to the floor again. Good. Wait for this one to come past and then we're going to get a feet set again. So squeeze the gas once again. Good. Lift and find the bite. There. Feet still. So I is didn't it, feel it as much that time. It's a sound. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just lowered slightly. It's good. Is it clear behind? Yeah. Is it clear on your right move? No one overtake. Anyone blind spot? Good. After the van's gone past, we don't need to signal. You're fine. Release the handbrake. So lift before the button. Lift hard, then button. You've lifted up and then let go. Lift hard, button. Lift hard and button. Lift hard. There you go. Good. Now the gas has dropped off. Just hold the wheel. Check here again. Check there again. Check your blind spot to your right again. Use your gas a little bit more. Want some power? and lift the clutch a little bit to start feeding the power in. Ooh. That's fine, good, you're okay. Put a right signal on now, signal up, just because the car behind you are okay, you can move out to the right. Good, lift the clutch fully, we've traveled about a car length. And move out to the right, you're going towards this car around. I don't think we want to go towards that one, do we? Cancel your signal, good. Now, squeeze your gas a little more, don't be scared of it. Good, well done, you're fine. And just keep lovely and straight, look up the road. I'll help you if there's any issue here, but there isn't at the minute. You don't even have to steer away from the guy. You don't have to, Aaron, okay. you're fine. We're going to go and park in. Keep going for now, you're going back in. We're going to go and park in by that second lamppost, the further one, all right? So come check in here and here and put a left signal on now. Signal down, good. Now bring it across towards the curb and come off the gas. When we're close enough, steer a little bit to the right and look up the road. We don't want to go towards or away now. Look up, we're going towards, we're going towards. Look up, not in your mirror. Good, cover your brake, cover your clutch. Clutch has got to go fully down, and then just gently brake and stop. Feet still. Now, one, two, three. What were they? What did I talk about last time? Handbrake. Go for it. Well done, that handbrake's not on tight enough. Feel it. Now it is. What do you do with this without looking? Very good, good, and then you can cancel the signal. Relax your feet, nice job, well done. Give yourself a little clap. How did that stopping go? Much better than last time. Good, okay. Without looking in your left mirror, look windscreen. Where's that curb? It's a bit to the left, but it's better than last time. It's perfect. Okay. Where you see it now? is good. Well okay. done. Do you understand the little mistake that you did as you came in was you were work, you were looking at your left mirror, mirror instead of the head. Just think of this. My left hand's the curb, my right hand's your car. As you're heading in towards the curb, you're slightly angled. If you look in your left mirror, you will see, see my thumb, you'll see a big space. You don't see where this front wheel is in relation to the curb. And that's how you can tell curb in the middle. So when the curb's in the middle, you're good and close. Look up, get straight, and then by all means, check your left mirror for your space from the curb. Okay. That's the mistake that people often make. They look in their mirror as they're coming in. Okay, that's what I did as well. But they're seeing where they've been, not where they're going. Okay. Which makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? All right, no, mm -hmm. no wonder people mess up. 
All right, very good. Um, what bit did you find particularly difficult? Was there anything about that, that was particularly difficult? That time? Yeah. Like, just kept going that way towards the curb rather than going straight. Okay. It's not difficult, but I just kept doing it. All right, okay. Was that as you were going past the cars, do you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What that generally is with people, and you tell me whether this is correct, is because people stare at the hazards. Were you staring at that car? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah? Yeah. And that is honestly the generation of people that the DVSA have produced, because you've already said to me that you've been doing the hazard perception test. The hazard perception test then makes you stare at hazards. It doesn't tell you how to act with your car and it doesn't tell you what to do. It just teaches you to stare at hazards. That's why I said before it's just a case of getting you through it Erin because the hazard perception test for me gets people in the total wrong mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was I saying to you even with the guy that was walking out? He's okay. He's okay. Where was I asking you to point? straight where should you look to point straight ahead of you ahead if they were a problem what should be your first course of action should it be to steer away from it or should you slow down do you think slow down correct okay if you just stare at things though as you're you gonna, found out you're gonna go towards them you go towards them mm -hmm. okay or in extreme situations you then do that which then is going to hit maybe a cyclist or a motorcyclist coming past you also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So try and remember, it's not the hazard that actually determines whether you go through. It's the risk or the space. Okay. And thinking about that back there, yeah. was was it, go on. It wasn't a massive risk, and there was Correct. space. Correct. So therefore, there's no real reason to be nervous of it. Yeah. Makes sense. Very good. Um, we're going to have another little drive off before we get swapped around and get heading back. Okay, we're going to have another little drive off um, and we're going to have a go at a couple of steers a bit further up. Okay, there's a couple of bends. So, what we're going to try and do is get your hands working around these corners. One thing that I said to you a little bit um, regarding the steering um, was to look where you want to go. Have I told you that before? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so try not to look where we point, try and look where we want to go, all right, which is around corners, and try and again keep your hands nice and loose and nice and relaxed because then um, your hands are going to move the car towards that direction you want to go. Okay. Um, we've got more of a hill start here than we did do last time. So if we've got more of a hill start, remember when we've got, you can leave the car on, okay? That's fine, we're going to be going in literally a minute. Um, when we did the hill start last time, I told you to find a little bit of bite. There was probably too much and I told you just to dip it slightly. How much bite are we going to need now? More. A bit more. And how much power are we going to need now? A tad more. A tad more. Yeah. But you still must feed that power in slowly. Okay. Get it? So put it all the way down and go slowly. What do you mean put it all the way put your down? Put foot on the clutch first. Uh, we will be putting the foot on the clutch to then choose the gear but when we've brought it up to the biting point um, you'll probably need a little tiny touch more bite because we're a little tiny touch more uphill. Not sure what you meant by putting the foot on the clutch all the way down. To Is start that the car. To first? Yeah. Okay good job. Have a little go. Yeah. Is there any particular bit that you feel as though you'd like to be concentrating on with this, or are you okay just, just to the feet just pedals. the feet pedals? All right, I'll, I'll pay special attention to that. Try and relax as much as you can, and um, do as you did last time. Listen and think of the instruction that Ashley is telling you, because that's the thing that you need to do and concentrate on. All right, great job, Aaron. Well done. Um, we're going to get prepped and ready to go. So. Find the pedals. Find the pedals, very good. Happy? Yeah. Good. What do you do with the clutch? Pull it down. Well done. Without looking, what do you then select? 
first gear. First gear, good. Hold on. And then handbrake. Do you want to take that off because we're not? On a we hill. haven't. We're on a hill and we haven't looked. And what do you need your feet to be like before you take the handbrake off? Do you need some drive going forward? Yeah. How do you do that? Biting point. Gas, power, and biting point. So hold the steering wheel. Good. So try and listen. There's the power. Very good. Now. Quick look in your mirror as well, there's no one coming up behind, so are you okay? Don't do your final checks yet, we're just doing that check to see whether it's appropriate for us to get a feet ready to go. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, have you got a little bit of bite? You heard it? Good. Feet still? There? So, is there anyone behind? Mm, yeah. What should we do with that car then? Wait. Should we wait for it? Okay. Press the clutch down then. It is down. All the way to the floor. There you go. All right, sound. After this car, is there a space? Yeah. Find the bite again. Lift the clutch up until you find that bite. There, feet still, don't move them. Hold the handbrake. Hold it. Now, is it clear behind to go? Yeah. Is there anyone in a blind spot to your right? Do we need no. to signal to anyone? No. Take handbrake off, lift the hand button. Lift button, lift button, lift. You're going button first. There you go. You got it. Release the handbrake. Good. A little bit more gas. A little bit more bite. And feed the power in very slowly. And keep watching your mirrors in case. Or if someone came up now. They are. We're all right. It's turned, isn't it? So keep watching things. Now, what's that beeper? I don't know. He's parking. So your parking brake's still on a little bit. Can you take that off? This one. Yeah. Down. Oh. You put it on. Okay, hands on the steering wheel now, and the clutch can come all the way up once we've travelled the car length, so good, squeeze your gas, you're driving. So when you hear that beeping, it's pretty obvious that sounds, cool. that, that sounds coming from the handbrake, but try not to pull it up, yeah, okay. Keep going, you're fine. If you look behind us as well, Erin, so there wasn't any pressure anyway, but just remember there's just absolutely none now, okay, keep going. Good. Don't forget I'm here. When we get to this corner, you can actually come off all the pedals. Just have a little check behind us again. Come off every pedal. Good. Still cover it so you're ready to use it. But look around the corner and move your hands around. Go on, steer a bit more. Bit more. Bit more. Bit more. That's good. Hold it there. Now start undoing because we're going towards the curb. There you go. And look up and point where you want to point. Squeeze your gas a little. We're still going towards the curb. Now we're not. We're good. So you can squeeze your gas again. Hold on, what was that like? Okay. Try and loosen your grip a little, okay. just so your hands actually slide around the wheel, because you'll find that easier. So rather than steering away from the kerb, like you're looking at, try and look where the centre line of the road is and go around it. So keep the gas just squeezed. We're going further towards that. See where I'm coming from? Now we're going away from it. We want to be towards that line. No, nah, we want to follow it. Okay. So just keep the gas going, and you're doing a good job. You're doing a great job. We're going slightly towards it, but we need to because the red parked car. Is anyone overtaking us, Aaron? No. So you're safe, aren't you? Risk is zero. And we'll use this sort of like, there's like a middle section of road, isn't there? Yeah. So use that and keep driving. So if risk is pretty low, what can you do with your right foot? Yes, take it off. Uh, do you think you need to take it off if no. risk is low? No. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. So what position should we get back to in a moment? Speed towards the car. So we'll need to check this mirror and this one. Yeah. Good, we're good. Keep it going. We're going to find somewhere to park in on the left as well. So I've looked behind us and around us. Will, will we need to signal to anyone? Is there anyone to no. maybe signal to? Leave it then. Cover your brake and clutch. So cover them both. Left yeah. foot covering the oh, clutch. Yeah. Good. Don't press it yet. And bring us in until we're close enough and keep watching in case we do need to signal to anyone. When are we close enough to that kid? And when we point straight, we're still going towards it. Now we're going away slightly, about right, no, towards it. A little bit away, a little bit away. That's good, look up. Clutch down. Good, use your brake lightly. Feet still. Now what? Handbrake. Good, go for it. What's that happening? Yeah, it didn't feel right. That did. Good, yeah. hold on. Now, what do you do with that? Wicked. Then all my feet off. Relax your feet off. Okay. Now clap. Well done. How did you find the steering? Better. Good. Did it make a difference? Because I've talked about even when we're 
parking next to the curb about the important fact of not going towards or away did that then help you understand how much steering to actually put on as yeah. you were going around the corners yeah brilliant where were we following when we went round the left corner where was I getting you to look around the corner the left curb yeah brilliant when we were going around the right bend where was I getting you to follow the right the yeah. right side of our lane which was sort of like a you can see the the, the bits on the tarmac where the road has yeah. been tarmac the join lines I was getting mm -hmm. you to follow them like the line down the middle of the road good very good so it's quite simple when you're turning left you follow the left curb generally yeah. when you're turning right you follow generally the centre line or if it was a curb the right curb okay, okay. so you, you look at what we call the inside of the bend all the time very good did it help when your hands were relaxed about those small little adjustments yeah. did it also help when it got your eyes looking further up is that something that you've noticed when we're parking next to the curb also? Yeah. That the best place to look when we are close enough is where? Up. Way up. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Okay. People try and look really close because they're conscious of that curb. They, they feel as though they're going to hit the curb if they don't look at it. But actually, when you're close enough, the best thing to think is, I need to point straight. Okay. Good. Because if you're neither going towards it or away from it are you going to hit it no there you go different mindset a lot of the time that you need to sort of like imprint onto people rather than their instinct their instincts scared to look at it okay you've done really I did well that the first time brilliant and that's not brilliant because you did it the first <laughs> time but sort of because we learn by our mistakes yeah okay that's fine the car's probably going to switch on in a mo, so I'd just like you to turn it off a second. So, okay. how do you turn the car off? Hold on. There's one thing that I'd like to finish with, if possible, before we swap around and get heading back. And it's actually releasing the handbrake. Yeah. Because yeah. you struggled with that, and it's nice to see that that reaction you agree with. Because remember what happened when we did move off there? We had that beeping sound. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty obvious, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. What caused the handbrake to not release properly? Is it because I'm not pulling it hard enough? Um, no, but that is one of the things that's causing you to struggle when you're taking it off, so we're just going to have a quick go at it. Okay. okay. If you look up the road, would you say that we're slightly pointed uphill, we could roll backwards if we took the handbrake off? Look up towards that blue car. Do you feel as though that's higher up than us? Yeah. So we're uphill, we're facing uphill. A little bit, not much. Great, but it still could roll, couldn't yeah. it? Great. You should do this anyway, really, but we're going to press the brake pedal and give a little squeeze, Aaron. So get your right foot in that correct position. Give your brake a little squeeze so you feel the pressure. Imagine if we were holding it there once we've yeah. just come to a stop. Now, to take the handbrake off, quick look, Aaron. What you're doing wrong is that you're trying to go for the button before you've taken the pressure off it. Okay. Look at that. And then sometimes what actually goes on is that you lift hard up to the next click and then it's even more difficult to take off. So you need to do both sort of at the same time, but there's a priority with the lift. Okay. So what I'm getting at is this, is your brake pedal press. Yeah. Yeah, all the way? No, just yeah. pressure as though we yeah, yeah. just stop. The priority is the lift, but you go lift, button, release. Okay. And what actually happened last time is that you were that eager to take the handbrake off because you needed to get your hands on the steering wheel because you were moving you sort of like threw it off a little okay. and that's why it went to this position where it was still on slightly which caused the beeping and the warning on the dashboard mm -hmm. have a go lift lift hard button release good put it back on good I don't mind the clicks whatsoever, but sometimes, um, I think some even examiners... Um, the what, sorry? You know the clicks as you pull that handbrake up there? I, that's no issue whatsoever. It's a, sometimes people think as though that's going to break the handbrake. It's not, okay? Um, they're actually designed to be used like that, but a lot of people think that that's the wrong thing. No, they don't like the sound. Now, I'm conscious of that. 
in case, because I can't guarantee the examiners are all going to be in the same frame of mind that I am. Okay. How do you stop it? Okay, we're going to have a go at taking it off and then I'll show you. So keep the brake pedal pressed. Take the handbrake off without looking. Lift feel up pressure button in. Now, did you notice there you sort of like lifted and let go? You still got it, but just make sure you lift and then the button. It's sort of and like one movement, but together, okay. but with a priority for the lift. Now to stop the clicking, press the button in now. Lift and hold tight, so the same pressure. Now let go of your thumb, now let go of the pressure. Get it? Take it off once more. Lift button, you've got it. Good. Okay. Put it back on again. Okay. So that clicking. The Have another go, come on, lift button. Now you lift it up too far before you press the button. They've got to be the same action, but with a priority with a lift. Have another okay. go. Lift button. No, not button lift. Lift hard. Button. There you go. Get it. Now button in. All the way to the top of the pressure. Now let go of your thumb. Then let go of the pressure. Get it? Any questions? No. Is that your dead shocker for today? Yeah. Cut yeah. it off, off the brake. Good. Where's the handbrake on properly? Yeah? Yeah. So you tell me, can you take your foot off the brake? Yeah. Good. That'll do us, Aaron. Well done. Um, mm -hmm. The car is off and we will uh, we'll get swapped around and get heading back. Um, getting out in traffic now. Mm -hmm. Feel okay to do it without dying? Yeah. Go on then. Go. Good. Things locked. Go on then. Wicked. Remembered it. Very good. Nice check. 